Library. My name is Lisa Stroman. I'm the World History Archivist. I'm going to walk you through the exhibit I curated called 100 Years of Classical Music on the South Plains. And we're going to walk you through the exhibit. We've got a main case and two smaller cases. And so let's get started. Okay, so this main case uh, shows the history of two music organizations, the Lubbock Music Club and the South Plains Music Teachers Association. Both were founded in November of 1923, both with the um, explicit goal to promote music education and entertainment opportunities across the South Plains. If you think about Lubbock in the 1920s, there's not a lot uh, going on. There's only 4,000 residents. Texas Tech is just being founded at this point in time uh, to bring in touring artists from around the United States. There weren't a lot of concert opportunities in the news. They would have to perform at the high school auditorium, or churches, or the Ag Pavilion that we have right outside our beautiful building. But from the beginning, they were bringing in these uh, performers like Percy Granger, Paul Van Catwick, Ephraim Zimbalas, Edwin Hughes, and these were bringing world-class talent to Lubbock, Texas, a town that barely had paved roads in the 1920s. The big thing for the South Plains Music Teachers was to have music festivals. So thousands of students would come to Lubbock for their annual festival. We have ribbons and we have programs scattered throughout this. Um, it provided students an opportunity to compete in various solo ensemble um, and theory competitions, but it also gave them scholarships uh, and gave them awards. One of the interesting uh, pieces in here is the first program from the Lubbock Little Symphony, which uh, the first concert of the Lubbock Symphony Orchestra uh, it says down at the very bottom, the first concert was sponsored by the Lubbock Music Club. Um, and then the other thing I'll, I'll spotlight is in 1954, these uh, groups came together to work on a production called uh, Adventures in Music Land. It was a six episode television show uh, that aired on K-Dub, a very new television station in Lubbock, uh, with uh, performances by the area public school students and uh, the script was written by the Lubbock Music Club members, and then it had uh, costumes and staging by uh, the cartoonist, former mayor, Dirk West. So in this case, uh, we talk about archive music organizations and streets. This is a story of these women and the work they did for the last century, but it's also the story of the archiving efforts that they did. They knew it was very important to preserve the materials that they had. And so we have like this picture, which has become the centerpiece of this exhibit, which is the members of the Lubbock Music Club in 1973 visiting our archive. It was located now in the Mount building. Um, and they are studying the scrapbooks that I studied to put together this exhibit. They were looking at scrapbooks, which uh, we have a lot of those. Women took hours and hours to assimilate all of this stuff. Um, they were also looking for program books. Program books are great to find out year-to-year -year activities of these organizations, uh, what music was played, who remembers what activities were going on in town. And then we have all these other manuscript materials that people can look through. We have financial records, we have different brochures that were released, we have the code of conduct, code of ethics for the public music teachers in the 1920s, and then we have blog books of every meeting. Um, and so if you are interested in women's organizational histories, um, archives can really give you uh, the, uh, the information that wouldn't exist anywhere else. Adjacent to this case is a screen that will show you some of these other scrapbooks, uh, some of the scans that we've been doing. And then you're hearing, as this video is going, music. Um, and the, the really great story behind this is that a uh, member of the Lubbock Music Club in the early 2000s where took a tape recorder to every meeting and recorded um, meetings, kind of bootleg recordings, and so you can hear what type of music was being performed in the early 2000s at the Lubbock Music Club. And so this is from an actual performance. Um, there's also a clip of a world history interview describing the organization and what it was like in 1986. So, um, now we're going to walk over to the final case, which is the biographies. Um, and as we're walking, I'll just say real quick that if you're interested in researching 
these women, um, our reading room is right on the other side of me, um, and you can contact our reference staff anytime. Um, but this last case is called Instrumental Women in Lotus Music History. This is meant not only not to be an all-encompassing list, but more of a call to arms. I wanted to create biographies for some of the women that I saw were significant in all of this. So we have Margaret Huff, who was one of the first music teachers. We have Mary Dunn, who was probably the most influential uh, music teacher in Lubbock in the 20th century, and whom I'm hoping I'll be writing more about soon. Um, we also have women like Jeanette Ramsey Olive, Nancy McKee, and Madge Webster, who uh, created the scrapbooks that we now have, that without their work to compile this stuff, we wouldn't have these stories. And then Frances Crispin um, is, is another woman who donated all of her records and was highly influential in the clubs. So um, this isn't the only, these aren't the only women, and this isn't the only story. And as oral history archivist, my goal is to tell these stories. You may not have manuscript material, you may not have all the records that we have here, um, but we can still capture these stories, we can have these life histories preserved um, in oral history recordings. So if you know of more stories of classical music in Lubbock or of just women's work on the South Plains, um, I'd encourage you all to get in touch with us. This is preserving the last 100 years, and I'm hoping we can help to preserve the next 100 years of work. Thank you.